Yeah, hi everyone, Jason here, Rabbit Law Miles Australia. Um, today I'm going to go through jointing of your boundary wire. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there in the industry uh, and on the internet about what you should and shouldn't do when it comes to jointing your wires. Um, so we've got a, a few tips on what not to do and a few tips on what to do. Um, you know, joiners that you really shouldn't use, ones that you can use but there are pros and cons to them. Uh, and then the, uh, the two methods that we actually highly recommend you do use that you don't have to worry about going back to your joint again after you've put it in. So straight into it, the bottom of the bottom uh, is these little red connectors. You'll, you'll generally get these in your, a lot of your uh, low-end uh, uh, Chinese robot lawnmowers. Now these guys here, I highly recommend you just do not use them. Just if you get these in your in your robot lawnmower, the very first thing you want to do is throw these in the bin. Okay, do not use them. There's basically there's there's no sealing of these guys here, so that they don't seal from water whatsoever. Um, moisture gets into the joint, gets into the inside of the wire, corrodes the inside of the wire out um, and you'll have never any troubles with your boundary wire if you use these joints. So do yourself a favour, throw them in the bin. <laughs> the next one I don't have here on the table um, but, but it's what, I'll put a picture up on the screen for you. The little, um, little heat shrink joiners that you can buy, they've already got solder inside them, they've usually got a little blue or red band on the, on the, around a clear sleeve. Um, they've already got solder inside them. The idea is you just put your wire, you strip your wire back, put them inside there, heat them up, um, and it shrinks down and does the solder joint for you all in one go. I've used these, I've trialed these many, many times before, tried to work out how to use them out in the field, um, and they're very, very difficult to get that solder to flow into the wire very well when you're outdoors. So when it's windy and cold, they're really, it's really, really difficult to use them. Um, I don't find them to be a very reliable joint at all, so I highly recommend that you just don't use them. Um, the next one is the little uh, gel filled joints, um, silicon, silicon grease filled joints. Now you get these in just about every robot lawnmower you buy. Um, I don't hate them, um, they're not a bad joiner and they do join quite well. And some wires they join better than others, so generally the bigger and heavier the wire is the better, they, the better joint they make. Um, however, what I do find with them is that after you've used them, obviously the, 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 uh, the silicon grease that squeezes out and actually comes out through all the holes here and, and it supposedly seals up the entire joint. Now what I find that over time, 6 months, 12 months, it might even be 2 years, um, is that that grease still moves around inside the joint, uh, probably when it gets really hot maybe, I'm not really sure, um, but eventually moisture gets inside these joints. Um, and typically happens within one to two years of installing them, sometimes quicker, sometimes they might last forever. Um, but because they don't work every single time, um, I recommend that if you do use these joints that you mark them down on a piece of paper somewhere or a map or put, put something in the garden uh, near the joint so, you, so that you can find this joint again later. Um, because there really is a good chance that it will fail over time and you'll need to get back to that joint and cut it off and put a new one on. So like I said, I don't, I don't say you can't use them. Um, by all means, you can use them, um, but they can fail, so there's some pros and cons. And the, 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 obviously the pro is they're very, very easy. You just put the wire, so you literally just poke the wire, you don't have to strip the wire back or anything, you just poke the wire in uh, and you squeeze it up and away it goes. They really are very simple and easy to use, and, um, but they can fail. And I've, I've witnessed them fail on many, many occasions, so just be aware. Okay, <clears throat> on to the two methods that we do recommend um, that you use. Um, the first of which um, is just using the little um, the little crimp joiners. So you can buy these little crimp joiners just by themselves, like this, um, or you can buy them in a kit um, with the uh, with the, with a resin filled heat shrink on them as well. Um, I don't recommend using them without resin filled heat shrink. Um, you can, but again, they don't seal completely well it's waterproof. Um, so what I do recommend is that you get the ones that have got the resin filled heat shrink in them. Um, and by resin filled I mean they've actually got glue lining on the inside of the heat shrink and you can tell that by, by squeezing them together and you can hear that they're sticky on the inside. So when they're sticky on the inside, uh, that's generally when, when you can uh, you tell that they've actually got a glue lining on the inside. So I'll, go, I'll do one of these little joints for you just to demonstrate how they work. So you get yourself one little joiner and one little piece of heat shrink out. Put these ones back to the side over here. Um, all the, we, we, we sell kits, uh, joining kits for all these guys here, so you've got the, you know, the resin filled heat shrink and the connector, uh, a crimper and a, little, and a little gas torch for melting the soldering iron. Um, and they also come with these little wire strippers. Very simple, very cheap little stripper. All you need to do is put them in to about the second hole down the bottom here, like such. And then put a, bit of, put a, bit, a little bit of pressure on here, just put a bit of pressure on that as you turn it around. 
turn around like such, and then you'll find it just pops off there like that, and then you've got your, your wire stripped out like that. Now, when you're doing these guys, stripping the wire back for these little red connectors, what you want to do is just strip back enough that when it's actually inside the connector, the yellow goes all up to there, you want the stripped wire to go about halfway. There's a little marker there in the middle, you can see. So, basically, just like that. Strip back both ends. So, again, into the second hole. Bit of pressure on the, on the top piece, spin it round, take it off, and there it is. Okay. First thing you want to do after that is put your heat shrink on. Don't forget to put your heat shrink on. I do this all the time out in the field myself. Put the heat shrink on, slide it back down the wire so you don't need to worry about it. Then slide your red connector on. So you put, put it on like that, and you push that all the way through until the yellow goes all the way through to the middle. And then at that point there, because of these crimpers, depending on what sort of crimpers you use, but if you just use these little crimpers here that we've got, that we sell, uh, they're only very, very thin, um, so, they only, so you've got to crimp them two or three times. But you can use them, they are quite handy with these types of joints because you can do one side at a time. So what you want to do is on the side that you've got your wire in, put this in here in the middle there somewhere, like such, and then we just squeeze that down, and that's got that in. That's going to hold that, in, at least for now, that'll hold that there. Then we put the other side in, like such, and you might find that you might need to give it a little, a little bit of a twist or a tidy up just to get it so it pushes in without losing any strands. Okay, and we go back to our crimper again, and we'll put one on the end here, like such, right there, like such, and that's that. Then I, I like to put two more in just to make sure that we get it nice and crimped. So I put one on the inside of that one, one on the inside of that one. And you've ended up with a crimp joint that looks just like that, okay? Now these don't give a really high tensile joint, so if you're going to pull on it really hard like this, you are going to most likely pull the wire out. Um, so it pays not to pull on it too hard. Um, it does a really good joint, there's nothing wrong with the actual joint itself, it's just that it doesn't get a lot of tensile strength. So once you've done that, you want to grab one of your, your torch that you've got with the kit there. So today I'm just using the little the little micro torch, we use these ourselves in the field. They're not really powerful, but they're, 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 they've got enough heat to still do everything out in the field, uh, solar outside when it's cold, okay? Um, put that guy there, now you're gonna, actually gonna shrink this down. This is actually a heat shrink. So you're gonna light the torch up, and we're just gonna move it back and forward, like this, just to make sure we don't put too much heat on the heat shrink. If you put too much heat on the heat shrink, it will melt, it will set fire uh, to the actual heat shrink. And work that all the way around, all sides, and you'll see it shrinking and you'll see it sealing up as it goes around. Mm. Okay, like such. And that looks like that after it's, after it's shrunk down. Okay, so by itself, that's not a bad joint. It's reasonably waterproof, but not perfectly waterproof because there's no resin in the inside of this guy. Um, and moisture can still get up inside there and eventually corrode out the joint. So slide your heat shrink back over the top again and just put your heat shrink about 50-50 over the top so, so it goes past both ends by about five or 10 millimeters is what it's designed to do. And then do the same thing with the resin filled heat shrink. <clears throat> I generally recommend that you start in the middle and work your way out. So start in the middle, shrink the middle down first. Once you've got the middle shrunk down, then work your way out both ways. Like such. Go all the way around again, trying to, try, try to make sure that you heat up on all sides, not just one side of the heat shrink. So it goes all the way around and it shrinks out. And you'll find that you'll end up with a nice sealed joint like such. Okay. Now, I didn't put this on perfectly straight. You can see there's actually quite a bit more um, heat shrink on this end than there is on this end. As long as it gets down onto the onto the wire and the glue start and the glue pokes out a little bit on the end there, um, that'll uh, that'll seal up perfectly fine. Okay, so that is one of the crimp joints done and dusted. Uh, like I said, not a lot of tensile strength, so you don't want to be pulling on it too much. Um, but it really does do a pretty strong a strong connection, and the connection inside there is waterproof. You never get to worry about it again. Okay. All right. So that's the crimp joints. The next one is the solder joints. Now, this is what we do ourselves in the field, so this is what we highly, our highest recommendation is that you actually do solder the joints because it gives you both tensile strength and a waterproof connection and a really good connection, okay? So the kits, again, that we sell here, um, we have uh, little, little sticks of heat shrink, of um, solder, sorry, um, the, uh, the gas torch, the stripper, and then we also sell these little, 
bags of four mil diameter resin filled heat shrink. Okay, so we'll grab one of those out of the bag, and again, you can tell that it's got the uh, it's got the glue lining inside it um, because it's sticky. So when you actually squeeze it, it's actually sticky, and you can hear it clicking inside. So we'll grab our piece of wire again. We'll cut that joint off. and then we'll start again with that piece of wire. So again, grab your little wire stripper. This time you want to strip back about 25 or 30 millimeters of wire out there somewhere. So we'll go round, 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 round. Pull that off there. This is about 25 or 30 mil, thereabouts. Strip that around there. Strip that off there, like such. Very, very easy. Um, again, first thing you do, put your solder on. Put your uh, solder. Getting it all very confused today, guys. Uh, put your heat shrink on first so we don't forget. Slide that down the wire out of the way. Now this time what you want to do is you want to cross the wires over like this, about halfway. Um, cross the wires over and then grab this bit here and twist it around the wire like such. Like that. And then the bit that's left over, you twist the other direction around the wire the other way. And that's going to leave you with an inline joint like that. That's all twisted up. It's actually quite strong. Um, and you can, from there it's very, very easy to solder and keep it in place. Um, so I'll hold this up here with a, just with a pair of pliers here, try and put that right where you can see it the best, which is probably about, probably about, uh, not doing so well here guys. How's that? That's not too bad. Okay, so we grab our little micro torch and our solder again. Pull out, pull out some solder. You're going to use about 50 mil to 60, 60 yeah, 50 or 100 mil of this, uh, of this solder when you're doing this. And all you want to do is you press down. There's a little lock on there as well, so make sure the uh, the solder thing is, is actually unlocked, and then you can actually press the button and it will light. Um, bring it down. Now you want the blue flame. You can just see the blue flame there on the on the camera. The blue flame, the tip of the blue flame. You want to just touch this, touch the um, the, uh, the wire with. Okay, that, that's the hottest point of the flame. So you want to heat it up there for a little while. Just when you go to dab the solder on, just sort of drop the drop the heat just a, a little bit lower, so you don't melt the uh, you don't actually melt the solder with the with the gas torch. You're actually melting it with the uh, with the wire. After you heat it up for a little while, the uh, the wire should actually flow through the wire. And you'll generally see it actually happen. Yeah, it's all starting to flow there now. So I've put about. I'll probably put a little bit more than 50 mil of solder in there, probably closer to 100 mil. Heat that a little bit more, and after that, let it cool down for a second. Okay, so once you've got that, if you can get a closer look at that, and you'll see that the solder's actually flowed all inside all the strands of wire. And that's what you want to see. You want to see that solder flow inside the strands of wire. Certainly not the nicest solder joint I've ever done, but that's okay. Okay, so after it's cooled down a bit, you want to grab your heat shrink and again you want to slide it over the top about 50-50, like so. And then you want to get your little this torch again. And we're going to do exactly the same thing, start from the middle, go around the middle, and then work our way up to the ends, making sure you go all the way around all the sides. Keep moving the gas flame around so you don't burn the wire like I just did a little bit there, so I'll show you what I did there in a second. Okay, so that's got it all sold on there, all, all um, shrunk up there perfectly fine. And you'll just see just there, it's not too bad, it won't, won't damage the wire too much, but I can see I've, I've actually burnt the sheath on the, on the wire there a little bit. And it will actually just, it's only just very superficial on the outside there. But that's going to give you a really, really good joint. Um, it's really weatherproof. It's really, really strong. You can't break that. You pull as hard as you like. You'll break the wire just as quick as you'll break that joint again. Um, it's glue lined, so there's, there's, it's completely sealed. There's no moisture getting in there, and that joint really is just as good as the wire was in the first place. Um, done properly, there's no possible way that that joint really is going to fail over time. Um, again, always. Do mark your joints, make sure you know where they are, because if you do do a bad solder joint in these things, again, they still can fail if you do if you do a bad joint. Um, but realistically, the heat shrink on top of this actually holds really, really strong as well. So not, it's not, even, not only the solder joint is, is holding that together, it's actually the glue inside the heat shrink as well. That'll hold it together. So 
no matter what you do here, that's really going to be a pretty damn good joint. Um, you should never have to worry about it again, but yeah, always mark your joints up so you can find them later on. So that's it for the jointing. So again, I'll just recap very, very quickly. These little guys here, the red ones, don't use them. Throw them in the bin. They really are really useless when it comes to jointing boundary wire outside. The, uh, the little solder filled heat shrink ones that you can buy, uh, put a picture on the screen here again, um, no good. Um, they're really no good at actually you, about joining outside in the cold and uh, getting a really, getting a um, reliable solder joint from those guys is really, really difficult. So I'd recommend you just don't use them. Um, the crimp connectors, these guys here that you get with everything, by all means use them if you have to. Um, you know, you're better off to use something else, but they will do the job. It's just make sure that you mark where they are because they probably will fail over time. Um, the crimp joints, um, so the crimp joints with a, with a, with a uh, resin filled heat shrink over the top, great joint, not a lot of tensile strength uh, to it, but as long as you're just joining it and, put, and burying it back in the, in the ground again, uh, then no problems whatsoever. And of course you need the, uh, need the little crimpers um, to, to, um, to, to crimp those up. And then obviously the solder joint, uh, which is what we mostly recommend, and that of course is your resin filled heat shrink, your little wire stripper to stripping back the cable, the solder for soldering it, and your little gas torch uh, for doing so. Um, I haven't spoke about these other torches here, so all the, the kits that we sell for both the crimping and for, the, uh, for soldering we sell with the micro torch, which is what we use ourselves in the field because it really is very cheap and very simple. Um, but we also do it with the mini torch, the same sort of design, it's just this is much more powerful. Um, it will hold a lot more heat out in the field. Particularly on a windy day, you'll get a much better job out of this. Much easier to solder with this out in the field when it's windy versus one of these guys. Oh, all place. And, and then the other one that we've got here as well is the same, basically it's a mini torch again. Now, the difference with this guy here, I'm just putting on the camera here so you can see, the difference with this guy here is he's got this little baffle here. So that baffle screws onto the end of the torch um, and that stops the flame from coming out. So when you're melting heat shrink, it just blows out heat, not just not flame. So if you're worried about burning the insulation of the wire like I just did uh, in this demonstration, then you can grab this torch here, you put that little baffle on the, on the end there uh, after you've soldered it um, and then you can actually melt heat shrink without, but without setting fire to it. It's also got this little reflector here on the back here that helps it melt the, the heat shrink all the way around as, as it goes. So a good little torch, really is fantastic little torch that guy. Um, and all of our kits that we sell, whether it's the crimping kit um, or the soldering kit, you can buy it with all three, with either of the three torches uh, available. Um, I think that's it guys. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please email us, sales at robotlawmiles.com.au. Uh, you can check out other videos on our website at www.robotlawmowers.com.au uh, and you can find out a lot of small videos and things that we post on our, on our Facebook page that we don't post anywhere else. So you can search for Robot Lawmiles Australia on Facebook. Thanks for watching.